Hey y'all, what's up? It's Mike. Um, so today is going to be more of like a sit down kind of like chit chat type of video. Um, just because I want to really just kind of express what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking. So um, let's go ahead and get get right into it. Let's start off by saying I completed dry January like flawlessly. Um, I had no drinks, no wine, alcohol, liquor, shots, nothing for the whole month of January, right? And I thought that it was going to be way, way harder than it actually was, right? But it actually was really easy. I didn't, I, I think I maybe have had a craving once, like I told y'all last week. I had a craving at the basketball game because um, I was feeling kind of like anxious with that large crowd, but that was a success like dry january that was like my first big success of the year and i really want to take or i really have taken time out to really reflect on that and acknowledge that i really hit a big milestone for me something that i just did not see happening for me and before i kind of get any further i do want to go back and give y'all some backstory so i think i have been drinking regularly um probably since college right so that's like over 10 years it started as like just like social recreational drinking but then once my anxiety started to get kind of worse in my mid to late 20s that's when i really saw myself using alcohol as more of a coping mechanism and less as you know just something to do for fun or just with friends and that's when i kind of knew that drinking was becoming not a problem but it was definitely a issue that i wanted to address within myself and i tried to you know kind of like <laughs> self-help um listen to podcasts look at YouTube videos, you know, the whole, like, the whole deal, right? Eventually, I just kind of talked about it to, you know, my therapist, and we found alternate, you know, solutions to when I feel anxious, when I feel nervous, when I feel scared, when I feel angry, when I feel upset, because there was a point in time where no matter what emotion I was feeling, the reward or the uh, coping drink or coping thing or how to deal with it. If I was upset, I had a drink to calm down. If I was sad, I had a drink to take my mind off of it. If I was angry, I had a drink to relax. If I was happy, I had a drink to celebrate. And I just felt like I was coming to a point where I was like, I don't want to have to I don't just I want to just not have to rely on alcohol and drinking to help me process and deal with my emotions and so with dry January I feel like completing that 31 days with no alcohol for me that's a major deal and I really want to go ahead and take this as a as long as I can for as long as I, you know, feel necessary for me to not drink anymore, whether that's six more months, whether that's six more years, whether that's the rest of my life, you know, it's all about what Mike thinks is best for Mike. And so when I posted that I completed Dry January on my Instagram story, I got a lot of DMs that were people asking like, whoa, sober, I didn't know you drank that much or sober i didn't know you were you know had a problem or and so let's let's preface this by saying everybody who goes sober is not like a rock bottom super dependent alcoholic person right i think labels like alcoholic labels like dependent labels like just any sort of kind of aggressive label like that 
we got to be careful about that because I don't consider myself someone who was an alcoholic or a recovering alcoholic just because I have family history of people who are alcoholics, who would drink a bottle a day, you know? There are people out there who cannot get up out of bed before drinking a bottle, an entire bottle of alcohol. You know what I mean? So I don't, I feel like I don't want to diminish people who are really struggling with drinking with labels like, you know, I'm recovering or I used to be addicted to alcohol or I was an alcoholic. So that's for me and that's for the audience. Everybody who goes sober is not, you know, does not have this huge major addiction to alcohol. Some people go sober because they just don't like the taste. Some people because they don't like how alcohol makes them feel. In my case, I went sober or I'm going sober because I don't like that I was beginning to build a dependent relationship on alcohol. Luckily, I caught it before the habit kind of started to snowball or the habit kind of started to become this big monster problem. So I'm grateful for that. But again, like, like the point is, you know, let's, we got to really be careful when we make assumptions, when people say that they're not drinking or when people say that they're cutting out alcohol. Everybody does not have, you know, there's different levels. You can't, you know what I mean? There's people who are really struggling. So we really can't just put everybody in that, in that kind of alcoholic circle because that's a real issue that, you know, real people are dealing with every day, every minute of the day. So kind of going into more so reflection now of my decision to be sober. The entire month of January was a very reflective month for me. Um, and I think that's due in part to the mental and emotional clarity that cutting out alcohol gave me. I was able to really process how I felt and process what I was thinking about things because I did not have anything else to lean on. I didn't have, you know, a bottle of wine to wind down at the end of the night and kind of, you know, replay the day in my head. I was able to sit with my feelings. If I was upset, I had no choice but to be upset and sit with that feeling and really feel that emotion and work myself through that emotion. If I was happy, I allowed myself to feel everything that came with being happy without having to enhance it or help myself be happy with a shot or a drink. If I was nervous or anxious, I had to find ways to slow my breathing, distract myself, regain control of my situation, to soothe my anxiety, soothe my nerves without grabbing a shot, two shot, three shot to get loose and take the edge off. Just a lot, a lot, a lot of self-reflection during the month of January and still now. And I'm learning things about myself and what makes me happy, what makes me irritated, what makes me relax without the addition of a drink. And that's really rewarding for me to, to learn more about myself as I'm getting older and just learn more of what I'm really capable of doing. Um, a major turning point that happened last year that really kind of started me, you know, getting off of alcohol. This, this probably started maybe last um, September, October is when I really started to notice that I was drinking less and less and less. And that's because we took a work trip in at the end of July, early August. And I was going to have to get on a plane. And getting on a plane was my all-time biggest fear. Like, there was nothing that I thought would ever get me to get my ass on a plane and go somewhere. No matter if it's a 20-minute flight, two-hour flight across the country, across the world, I was like, that is just something that I 
will never do because I'm just too afraid and I don't know how to deal with it. So I got on the plane. Obviously, I had drink. I had help with a drink before the plane, before the flight. But once I came back from my trip, we flew there and back. It was a what an hour and a half flight, Atlanta to New Orleans, there and back. So I spoke with my therapist, and the weeks following my return from you know my first time on the plane, I just told her I was like, I really feel like there's like this barrier in my mind that has been completely just torn down, just bust wide open because I conquered what I thought was my biggest fear in my life. For as long as I can remember, since I've been a kid, I've always been afraid of planes, always. Just being able to get on the plane, enjoy, I, I even enjoyed the plane ride. I enjoyed the ride there, enjoyed the ride back. We took another trip for work in September to Chicago, a little bit longer flight, two hour flight. Enjoyed the flight there, enjoyed the flight back. Now the flight back on the Chicago trip, I did not have a chance to get a drink, to get a drink, excuse me, pre-flight. So I was on the Chicago flight, Chicago to Atlanta, completely sober. And I did fine, I fell asleep. Watched movies, you know what I mean? Like I was on, I was on Netflix, whatever. Just completely chill, cool, not a worry, not a care in the world. And so like I told my therapist, I was like, I really feel like a barrier in my mind has just been broken down. And I really feel like I can just do anything now. And so kind of fast forwarding to now, that's just really how I feel about, you know, I don't need alcohol to reach goals or I don't need alcohol to help my anxiety. I don't need to drink to do anything. And the most rewarding part of it is just seeing those immediate results. My skin looks better. I'm losing weight like I want to. I'm slimming down. I don't feel bloated. I'm not tired. I can focus better. I'm way more creative. I'm a lot more determined with my goals. And I have, I'm setting aside more conscious time to put in conscious effort to do the things that I want to do to make me happy. I honestly, at this point, don't know if I can see myself drinking again in the near future. I just, it's just, it's been such a rewarding thing to go through, such a rewarding change for me. And I just want to keep, you know, 2024, I just want to keep leveling up, keep getting better and better and better. And um, I don't want to keep y'all too long. <laughs> I just really wanted to kind of get my thoughts out on my, you know, my new sobriety journey and just really kind of share with y'all. Maybe this will help somebody out there who's maybe afraid to take that leap to put down the drink or, you know, just to drink less. You can still drink, just drink less. If, if whatever works for you, honestly. Um, so yeah, I don't want to want to ramble on too much, but if this video helped you out at all, if you kind of learned something new from this video, or if you related to this video at all, I want you to leave me a comment and let's have a discussion down in the comment section, uh, just us. So again, thank y'all for watching. My name is Mike. Uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram. TikTok. It'll be linked in the description and at the end of this video. And I will see y'all next time.